Tyndall has been animating films for 50 years, and his body of work has ensured him an honored place in the big wide history of cartoons. A bold graphic illustrator, he has established his own style of humor through his brilliant cartoon inventions. There are no rules without exception in animation, except the rule that there are no rules without exception. Always a fan of cars, trains, and all kinds of machines, his work often utilizes these interests to explore and criticize the mechanics of urban society. When superhighways began to look like a plate of spaghetti, Kai's response was, what on earth? Uh, a lot of people think I don't like cars because I made this film, What on Earth, deals with uh, the automobile in our human society. I really love cars, especially before I had one. I made this film after a trip to Los Angeles where I could see the effect on the city that the cars had. Also, I, I remember once having flown over a city and looking down and couldn't see the people. Later on, all this became popular and many people spoke out against the, the assault of the automobile. The eradication of these pests is obviously a top priority job for the working class. As a boy, Kai's father taught him how to paint and to observe society with a critical eye. Later, as the Nazis invaded Europe in World War II, Kai got his start in animation by illustrating anti-Hitler cartoons for the news media in Denmark. His early spots for safety prevention merged his social concerns with his love of tunes, trains and automobiles. When her lawnmower ran out of fuel, she knew what to do. She let the motor cool down before adding more gas. Gas on a hot motor can ignite in a flash. Playing off the post-war industrial boom, Kai has produced a body of work that reintroduces a Chaplin-esque style of slapstick as it explores the wonders of the growing mechanized world. I am a bit of a frustrated engineer myself. I love things mechanical and I love to make gags on mechanical things. Not only a talented animator but an avid mechanic, for years Kai has been building giant train sets for himself and his family to enjoy in his own backyard. I love to laugh and, and uh, what better stuff was there to laugh, get, give you a laugh than Disney's short cartoons in the 30s. Good wholesome laugh. With his simple and colorful images, a clever complex style comes through with amazing invention. In 1962, while making his film I Know an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly, performed by Burl Ives, Kai temporarily shelved this project because it was impossible to continue animating a sequence that he felt mirrored the Cuban Missile Crisis. The fuse of the whole world has been lit. And I was sitting there and with this bomb and this smoke coming out. I mean, it was a frantic time, you know. Everybody expected the world to blow up. And I didn't dare let this bomb go up until the, the, they had defused the big one. And once that was done, then I blew the bomb in the old lady. Whether the issues are drug use or cigarette addiction and advertising, Kai has used his cartoons as a platform to state his personal views on these matters. People are used to having cigarette advertising television, and suddenly, out of the blue, you have some savage assault on the very idea of smoking done in a cartoon way. It actually ended up in the Houses of Parliament in some occasions because a theater chain refused to screen that film on the ground that they couldn't show a dog doing its business. I must say, I'm, I have a hard time understanding all the new ideas of political correctness. Do we say or do anything that somehow wouldn't be accepted in today's society? I think somebody said that the message of that film is that dogs shouldn't smoke grass. I thought I really might have some sort of comment on this marijuana use and so on. I think it's actually to be seen more as a side comment on, on that period. Yeah. 
the swiftness of urban overdevelopment was illustrated cleverly in a film he made for the Osaka World Fair in 1970. The film, The City Osaka, shows off Kai's bold graphic mastery in an entertaining demonstration of how construction can happen in the blink of an eye. The film was not made tongue-in-cheek. The film was actually made to prove how good we are. <laughs> but it played for six months around the clock in Osaka. The object was to impress the Japanese. So we could make buildings like pre-assembling, and they just push them together by a bulldozer, and they would rise instantly. Even the Japanese haven't done that yet. <laughs> For almost four decades, Kai Pindle has kept himself young at heart, creating characters that preschool children can identify with. Out of his realization that little kids want to watch films that mirror their own learning experiences, he teamed up with Peter Ustinov to hatch Peep, a little chick finding his way through the big wide world. Oh, it's me. I thought it would be interesting for a child who's very young to watch somebody who's actually younger find out things they already have found out and enjoying to see them learning these things, experiences that they already have. Peep shouted, Chap, this is our new friend Tom. He likes birds. Oh, well, if you like birds so much, Tom, there's a whole lot up in the tree. Mmm, yum, thought Tom. I'll bet they're delicious. From his countless explorations through tunes, trains and automobiles, Kai Pindle's spark ignites animation into clever and comic cartoon masterpieces. An exploding fuel can spoils the meal. The old lady knew just what to do. Do you? I said to my colleague back some 15, 20 years ago, I said, if this animation business ever takes off and becomes important, for a brief moment, we old timers will have our day. The thing with animated film, it's a big field. And although I've been in this for 50 years now, there's still more to explore. Of course.